Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A day with friends and family to celebrate a graduate ends in gunfire. This morning, several people are in the hospital. Just ahead on GMSA, all the details we know now. An 11 year old shot and now in the hospital in critical condition. We had the latest on what police say happened there. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 66 degrees, a cool 66 to start your Sunday morning. But what is the rest of the day? What is the week going to look like? Sarah Spivey joining us in just a few moments. But for now, good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, June 14th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you got to enjoy the low humidity yesterday. Low humidity, high sun, nice. zero clouds, happy flag day. That is why yes. dressed like a flag. But yeah, <laughs> yesterday used SPF 50. Good. Thank you both for Good. your recommendation. I'm we glad. are concerned about you. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad that you went to the pool. I saw that you went to the pool mm -hmm. too. Yesterday was a great day to go to the pool. We only got up to about 92 degrees for the high temperature, low humidity, and we're starting off this morning even cooler than yesterday. Take a look at these temperatures this morning. 66 degrees in the Alamo City right now. 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 57 in Kerrville, 59 in Rio Medina, and 65 in New Braunfels. Get out and enjoy your cup of coffee this outside this morning because the humidity is likely going to return early tomorrow. So it's Sunday. A lot of the kiddos are going to want to head out to the playground or the backyard. Here's a look at your playground forecast. It's going to be toasty in the afternoon. 92 for the high east southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. But all in all, a nice day because of the low humidity. I've got the 411 though on the humidity returning in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, several people in the hospital after a graduation party on the east side ends with gunshots. It happened around 10 last night in the 4600 block of Argonne Drive, not far from Sam Houston High School. Our Alicia Barrera is live downtown. Now, Alicia, what can you tell us about the victims? Good morning. Police say three people were hit. Two are listed in stable condition. One other person is in critical condition, and all these three victims are recovering this morning at BMC Hospital. But what exactly led to this shooting at this graduation party? Well, here's what police had to say. This all happened just before 10 p.m. Police say they received a call to a shooting at a home that was hosting a graduation party. According to officers, a truck drove up to the home on Argonne Drive with several suspects inside that vehicle. Witnesses told investigators the suspects began to argue with those at the graduation party. And moments later, the suspects pulled out at least two guns, opened fire and took off. Three people were hit their ages, a 15 year old boy, a 30 year old woman and 47 year old man. And this morning, we know that police continue their search for those suspects that took off, but they did update us telling us that they're, they have one suspect in custody, but as, as this morning, no charges have been filed. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, an 11 year old boy in serious condition in the hospital after being shot on the city's west side. It happened after 10 last night in the 200 block of Nelson Avenue. According to police, the boy was shot while he was in the living room. The people in the home told police they didn't know if it was a drive-by shooting or if it was someone who just walked up to the house. The boy was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. That investigation is to determine what exactly happened. And the Royce City Police Department asking for your help finding a 16-year-old girl who was last seen yesterday around 2 a.m. Royce Police saying 16-year-old Kylie White was last seen in the 500 block of Love Lane in Royce City. She stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, blonde hair, hazel eyes, pink braces. Officers believe she is in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information that can help find her or contact the police, Department 972-204-7002. Neighbors living next to the bar rebar on Broadway are worried after a shooting that happened Friday night that sent eight people to the hospital. San Antonio police saying that an intoxicated man was refused entry and retaliated by shooting at people there before getting away. Neighbors say the bar scene has caused a lot of frustration there, including people parking in their yards, some loud music playing and some people defecating on their property. Now they say they're upset at the suspect responsible and hope he's found sooner rather than later. Things like this just don't need to happen, and especially with like everything that's going on right now. I mean, people are already really on edge and people are already feeling really unsafe. Just think of yourself being in that situation, being on the other side of that gun and think of your own family 
that would be out in this kind of situation? And would you want to do that to your own family or be on the receiving end of something like that? District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry says they will have more discussions with the community about their concerns. He says he will look at possibly adding more signage there in the area to protect residents and increase police patrol. For the latest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases, which has been surging recently, 230 new positive cases. It's the highest report for a single day ever here in Bear County, bringing the total here to 4,242. Metro Health also confirming four new deaths in our community related to the pandemic. Now that stands at a total of 88 people dead related to COVID-19. Breaking down even further, there are 148 patients in the hospital, 58 in the ICU and 26 on ventilators. Local health officials say our area's daily positivity rate has doubled from just a week ago. And all Black Lives Matter. That was a message from a group of protesters downtown last night, marching to end racial inequality and violence against men and women of color, especially those in the LGBTQ community. Now, this comes one day after President Donald Trump's administration announced plans to roll back health care protections for the transgender community. And also coming on a weekend, which marks the four year anniversary of the mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. I have to fight two battles, not only being black, also being queer. My existence has to be respected. My trans people have to be respected because we're all human beings at the end of the day. The group marched to Crockett Park where they held a small candlelight vigil to honor those who lost their lives due to transphobia. Mayor Ron Nirenberg was also present where he says San Antonio will not be known as a place of inequality. In your morning headlines, a grim end to a nine month mystery. Idaho investigators confirming the remains found on the property of a Chad Daybell belonged to both missing children of his wife, Lori. Now, police discovered the remains early this week. 17 year old Tylee and seven year old JJ had not been seen since September of last year. The mother facing criminal charges related to the children's disappearance. She is pleaded not guilty. Daybell now facing two felony counts of destruction, alteration or concealment of evidence. He has not yet entered, entered a plea. The U.S. Military Academy at West Point now has its first observant Sikh graduate. Second Lieutenant Amnal Narang is a second generation immigrant from Georgia. Other Sikhs have gone through the academy, but she's the first to follow religious practices like not cutting her hair. It was only in the 2017 that military relaxed regulations around such practices. President Donald Trump has, was speaking at the West Point graduation yesterday. And time now, 6.07, 66 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, we introduce you to Tristino Ali from Clemens High School. And we're going to tell you the plans he has on attending one of the top music education programs in the country. And next on GMSA, breaking down big changes to the Oscars, including new diversity requirements. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's the last of the nice low humidity. <laughs> That's what we hear. I don't not know. ever, for the not, record. Not, not forever, ever. <laughs> but maybe for a little bit. Uh, we're going to check in with Sarah to see what you can expect for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science is planning to make the Oscars more inclusive and more diverse. The Academy says the initiative is called Academy Aperture 2025. Phase one of this initiative will focus on governance, membership and workplace culture. The Academy and the Producers Guild of America also plan to develop inclusive industry standards. The changes come after years of criticism that the Oscars are dominated by Caucasians and dominated by men. Starting this year, the Best Picture category will be extended to 10 nominees instead of just five. I think we all know here, as we saw with my music taste yesterday, I don't know anything about, about, movies? about pop culture, about oh, current pop culture. I see. Sure you do. I don't even know what's an Oscar movie. Yes, you do. You, you, I did just I see forgot. the Joker for the first time gonna, last week. I was going to say, I I'm only was, a few months behind that on was that. Your, that was your pick. At least yeah. you were looking at, you did your research. We did the picks, and right. I was like, oh, this looks intriguing. Yeah. I grew up with comic books. So I did Joker watch an intense pick. pop culture movie yesterday. Ooh, what was it? Was it? Fight Club. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a classic. But that's almost like a cult classic. Yeah, it's <laughs> intense. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm okay. 
<laughs> but the first rule is I can't talk about it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look outside. We are looking at a really beautiful start to the day there. Nice pink hue to the sky as we're starting off with clear skies and comfortable weather. It is 66 degrees outside right now. Very nice conditions outside with low humidity and, and even a breeze from the west northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So we are looking at a great great Sunday ahead for us starting off crisp and cool 57 up in Kerrville and in Fredericksburg. It's 64 in Rock Springs, 65 in New Braunfels, 62 for our friends in Austin, 64 in Pleasanton, 61 in New Valley, still in the 70s though out toward Del Rio. I'm going to take you through the future cast. There could be an isolated shower along the coast today, but here in San Antonio we will stay dry and it'll get warm in the afternoon. Probably a low a high temperature rather in the low 90s just about everywhere you look around downtown 92 degrees up in the hill country near 90 degrees for areas around Bernie and Timberwood Park and Leon Springs. Once again, the weather today very similar to yesterday 80 around 10 86 around noon 92 in the afternoon and then cooling back down into the 80s. But unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. We will have low humidity today, but our east southeast winds are slowly going to increase the humidity so that by the start of the day tomorrow, you'll notice the mugginess in the air. Right now, dew points are in the 50s. That's the sweet spot. That's where we want dew points to be. That's when it's pleasant outside. But look as we go through time by tomorrow and on Tuesday, our dew points will be back into the 60s and they'll pretty, pretty much stay there for the week ahead. But just because it's going to get muggy doesn't mean we're going to have rain. In fact, we're going to have a big blocking high pressure system that's going to keep out all of the uh, the rain systems around the nation here in San Antonio and across the state of Texas. We will stay dry because of that blocking high. The one exception to this is going to be our friends along the coastal plains over the next few days. Rain chances could end up developing because of the sea breeze for areas like Victoria, Beeville, even up to Carn City and Live Oak County. But here in San Antonio and just north and west of 35, it's going to stay dry over the next few days. I can't rule out one or two showers along the coastal plain, but unfortunately, that's about it. And June is actually one of our rainiest months in the year, typically, and we just haven't seen much. We've seen a little bit less than a tenth of an inch of rain for the month of June so far. So looking ahead to the forecast, morning clouds tomorrow, and you'll notice the mugginess. A 10% chance for a stray shower from the coastal plain to reach that I-35 corridor. But other than that, it's going to be humid again all week long. Partly cloudy skies, morning clouds, afternoon sun. High temperatures will be in the mid-90s but a heat index will make it feel closer to 100. By the way, last week when we were really toasty, we actually didn't even hit 100 degrees. It just felt like 100 because of the humidity. So doesn't look like we'll see 100 officially in the week ahead, but it's going to feel like it, guys. Well, the low humidity was nice while it lasted. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 616, 66 degrees now. Teachers are superheroes, but one in Boliva is taking a state step further for his students. That's still ahead on GMSA. It's Flash. I know. And Superman <laughs> right there. <laughs> and the singing voice of our next great graduate, landing him in one of the top music institutions in the country. We show you next. Good morning and welcome back. It is time to highlight the great graduates in and around San Antonio. And this one is very special. His singing voice landing him a top spot at one of the top music education institutions across the entire country. In today's edition of our great graduate series, Sarah Costa introduces us to Tristino Ali from Clements High School. Lift every voice, glorious praise of I was really shy, like really shy, like somebody walked past me, I mm -mm, wasn't going to happen. Senior Tristino Ali says it was his choir class that helped him break him out of his shell. After achieving several awards through Honors Choir over four years at Clemens High School, he says making All-State Choir this year was the most rewarding. Definitely making the All-State Choir, that was the biggest thing ever for me. I mean, that made this year this year, wow. It's what he says inspired him to continue his education in music. This fall, Tristino 
plans on attending the University of North Texas to study musical education. He says he's extremely proud to get into the program, saying it's one of the top 15 programs in the country. Lift every voice. But it wasn't just music that helped him land that spot, but also his grades. Tristino is graduating top 10% of his class from the IB program. The IB program, man. It's hard. One of Tristino's school counselors says his accomplishments are impressive and she's extremely proud of his hard work. He's one of a very small handful of students that have been extremely successful in our International Baccalaureate program, also known as IB, and he's just a phenomenal young man. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful voice. Wow. And Tristina says he wants to use his music degree to one day be a high school choir teacher. Congratulations, Tristina. Congratulations. That was amazing. Yes. Time now, 621, 66 degrees out. And next on GMSA, we all know teachers have been heroes recently, but a teacher in Bolivia is taking it to another level. And time to take a look at birthdays this morning. Anna Marie, 16 years old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Anna Marie. And happy birthday to Franco. Cute Ooh. pick, baseball pick. <laughs> Eight years old. Keep posting your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. A teacher in Bolivia is a superhero to his students, obviously. So many teachers around yes. the world are superheroes to our students during this coronavirus. Yeah, so thank you to all the teachers and for his students. Sometimes Jorge Villarreal is Spider-Man and other times he's Flash or Green Lantern, but he's always a teacher. So Villarreal, who lives in a poorer neighborhood of the Bolivian capital, teaches art in a wealthier area. He says the students arrive to the virtual classes before him and the first surprise is to guess which superhero <laughs> will appear on the screen. The class, get this, begins with a Zumba-style warm-up got to get the blood flowing. He's also a Zumba instructor, fun fact. Then it goes to a prayer and then superhero music. Obviously got to set the right atmosphere if you're getting taught by Flash. And it means a lot to see your teacher like that, you know, especially, you know, during uh, mm -hmm. the lockdown. It was, you know, my little girl was excited to see her teacher. So I can imagine these students seeing their teacher dressed up like this. Oh, we just saw a Captain America costume. Yeah. Also, things that's not mentioned in the script. <laughs> The room that he's in is phenomenal. Oh, yes. Aw, look, making the sign of the heart. Love it. Very cool. Yeah, so cool. 626, 66 degrees out. And we hope you have a phenomenal weekend, but they're also enjoying weather safely. We're still in a pandemic, and the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Texas still surging. We're going to have the numbers after the break. And protesters taking to the streets of Atlanta, setting a Wendy's restaurant on fire after a black man shot and killed by police there in Atlanta. We have the latest details. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, June 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning, happy Sunday. Hope you had a happy Saturday. We got out, uh, did a little bike riding. Nice. Very nice weather. Is yeah. Rooney your daughter? She's, she's done with the... Uh... The training wheels? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, sorry. Well, well no, no. I, I mean, I, I wanted her to take her time because, you know, I, I, I'm mom. Right. And I want her to go through every step Be safe, slowly. Smart. And then my husband's like, no, get those training wheels. <laughs> but they actually broke, one broke off. And so we just wound up taking the other one off. And there you go. There she it was is. meant you're, to be. You're the cherisher and he's the motivator. Yes. Isn't that yes. right? <laughs> Pretty awesome. much. It's a good balance between you two, I think. Well, a beautiful start to the day today. In in fact, as you look outside, a nice look at the sunrise there uh, for many places around San Antonio. We are seeing very crisp and cool mornings. Outside temperatures are in the 50s and 60s for honestly, what's the fourth day in a row? And we really haven't had this stretch of nice, crisp and cool mornings for a while. And guess what? we probably won't have a good long stretch of these crisp and cool mornings until the fall, unfortunately. Now, today is going to be interesting. We'll warm up. We'll be close to 90 
two degrees in the afternoon, but we are going to be seeing low humidity all day, which is nice news. 66 degrees outside right now in San Antonio, but it's in the 50s in the Hill Country, 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 56 in Kerrville, 56 in Comfort, 60 in Bandera, 66 in Floresville. It's 65 in New Braunfels, 63 at JBSA Randolph, 63 at Port SA. Just an absolutely beautiful start. If you can, after GMSA, have your cup of coffee outside. You won't regret it. In fact, soak up these nice temperatures because like I said, humidity is returning as early as tomorrow morning. So in the forecast today, 80 and pleasant around 10, sunny 86 around noon, 92 will have low humidity, but it'll still be hot. So try to find some shade if you are going to be going out this afternoon. East Southeast winds at five to 10 miles per hour and a really pleasant evening. If you're going to do that outdoor bar, barbecue for Sunday. Go for it. It's going to be a great day. Uh, but looking ahead, I do want to talk about a small possibility for an isolated shower or storm tomorrow. Other than that, dry as a bone over the next few days. I'll be back with a look at that barbecue forecast outdoors in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a day of celebration for the accomplishments of a graduate ends in gunfire on the city's east side this morning. Several people in the hospital and the suspects, they're still on the loose. It happened around 10 last night in the 4600 block of Argonne Drive near Sam Houston High School. Our Alicia Beretta is live with what led to this violent encounter. Well, all police have been able to say this morning is that it was due that this shooting led up to was led up to uh, after an argument with the suspects in the car took place with those at the graduation party. And this morning, police are still looking for those suspects as well as trying to figure out exactly what the motive behind the shooting was. They know it was that argument, but what happened before? According to officers, a truck drove up to the home on Argonne Drive with several suspects inside that vehicle. Witnesses told investigators the suspect began to argue with those at the graduation party. And moments later, the suspects pulled out at least two guns, opened fire, and then took off. Police say they have one suspect in custody this morning. No charges have been filed just yet, and police continue their search for the other suspects involved. And about the victims, what I can tell you is that three people were hit during the shooting. It's a 15-year-old boy, a 30-year-old woman, and a 47-year-old man. Two were listed in stable condition. One is in critical condition. All three victims are recovering at Bamsey Hospital. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. A different kind of protest happening at the Alamo. Dozens rallying against a plan to relocate the Alamo Cenotaph. Now, yesterday's groups of protesters rallied at the Alamo to speak out against the Alamo Master Plan. The plan proposed by the state calls for the Cenotaph to be moved 500 feet south of where it is now. Those who oppose the plan say it interferes with the Alamo's history. The majority of the people in Texas have no idea that the Defenders Monument is going to be moved off of the battlefield. And there is no reason given, except it's in the way, it has to be repaired, so we can only repair it by moving it, which makes no sense. Uh, and, and there's no other reason to move the monument. The Cenotaph was built in 1939 as a memorial to those who fought during the Battle of the Alamo. The officer accused of shooting a black man after a struggle at an Atlanta Wendy's has been fired and another officer placed on administrative duty. Atlanta's police chief resigned yesterday after a video of the deadly shooting went viral. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Protesters gathered outside the Atlanta Wendy's late Saturday night, reportedly setting the fast food restaurant on fire, where 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks died at the hands of police officers. Authorities in Georgia are scouring through videos of that violent struggle that turned deadly Friday night, when officials say police shot and killed Brooks after he allegedly resisted arrest. I don't want anyone in any circumstances to rush to any form of judgment. It's very easy to do in these cases. On either side, we realize there's a tremendous amount of emotion. Officers were called to the parking lot around 10.30 p.m. with complaints of Brooks asleep in his car, blocking the drive through Police claimed he failed a sobriety test and that when they tried to arrest him, he resisted and was able to grab an officer's taser. In this surveillance video, you can see him running away, then appearing to point the taser at the officers. At that point, the Atlanta officer reaches down and retrieves his weapon from his holster 
discharges it, strikes Mr. Brooks there on the parking lot, and he goes down. Late Saturday, attorneys for Brooks's family say the officers didn't have to use deadly force. He had other options than shooting a man in the back. Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields stepping down Saturday after calls for her resignation as protesters demand police reform and racial justice. Chief Shields has offered to immediately step aside as police chief so that the city may move forward with urgency in rebuilding the trust so desperately needed throughout our communities. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, as we see a surge of confirmed COVID-19 numbers here in the county, several members of the Bear County Sheriff's Office now in quarantine. This comes after working close with a deputy who tested positive. Several non-symptomatic, asymptomatic staff members were asked to work from home pending their test results. The sheriff, Javier Salazar, returned to work Friday. Others expect to return to work in the coming days. To put the problem into perspective, though, Bear County has seen 701 new COVID-19 cases in just the last five days. Governor Greg Abbott has responded to Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, who urged him to make wearing face masks in public mandatory. Now, part of Governor Greg Abbott's response was it's about individual responsibility. Judge Wolf sent the letter on Friday, which said fewer people in the city are seen wearing masks or social distancing because local governments can't impose penalties. Governor Abbott released a statement saying he disagrees. The statement reads in part, quote, it's wrong to deprive someone of their liberty just because they're not wearing a mask during this course of this challenge. And that's why he and I disagree, end quote. And since that letter was released, Texas saw more than 2,000 new cases of the coronavirus. Yes, that letter was just announced yesterday. Another 18 deaths reported here in Texas and a record number of people with COVID-19 hospitalized for the second day in a row. State health officials reporting 2,331 new cases in the Lone Star State, bringing the total to a little more than 86,000. The death toll rose to 1,957. The number of Texans hospitalized with COVID-19, 2,242. And that was just for yesterday, exceeding Friday's record high. From the protests to the pandemic and now the economic fallout, so much going on here in San Antonio and across the country. Here at KSET, we are hearing from local leaders and lawmakers, and today we'll be speaking with Congressman Will Hurd live. We will talk about what Congress can do about police abuse and the millions of dollars allocated to San Antonio through the CARES Act. We also want to hear from you. That's right. We want you to participate just ahead on ksat.com. Just head there right now. Submit any questions that you would ask Congressman Will Hurd if you could sit in front of him and talk to him. And don't miss the interview live. That's at 8 a.m. this morning. Time now, 639, 66 degrees out. A new movie from Spike Lee about a group of veterans and a buried treasure. We have an insight of the movie that's coming up on GMSA. And it's never too late to get exercise, especially when it's for a good cause. An amazing story of a 90-year-old woman walking the height of a mountain. Details next. She's so cute. Yes, she is, actually. <laughs> That's a good observation. I'm looking forward to that story. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, it's a good time to hike right now with low humidity or just get outside and, like Sarah said, enjoy a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. The UK's Prince Charles writing a letter of support to a woman climbing the height of a mountain. Get this, just using her own staircase. Margaret Payne is challenging herself to climb the height of Scottish Mountain Sullivan using nothing but the stairs of her home, and it's all for charity. The 90-year-old is taking on this challenge to raise money for the Highlands Hospice and the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. She said she took on the challenge after being inspired by the fundraising efforts of Sir Captain Tom. He raised tens of millions of pounds for National Health Service charities just by walking around his garden during the lockdown. Well, I was climbing the stairs anyway on wet and windy days when I couldn't go out. And Nikki, my daughter, said, why don't you do something with this? As of right now, she has raised approximately $489,235 since she started on Easter Sunday. On her fundraising page, Margaret says she hopes the challenge will take her between 10 and 12 weeks. 
Oh, Margaret, what a great cause. That's so awesome. That is amazing. She's so cute. She is That's cute. no small feat when no. you're 90 years old. No. no. no small feat whatsoever. So that's really awesome and uplifting to see this morning. Hey, guys, are you going to enjoy some time outside today? Yes, I'm hoping Gold. for that. That's awesome. Yes, especially because uh, I hear that the low humidity doing, will not wait, be sticking are we around. Are talking to you across the room or are we going oh, boxes? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing No, 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 no. I just need to make sure because, like, we look kind of like cockeyed. Like, you're looking here. I'm looking it's this way. Right. It's all right. Sarah's, Hi, Sarah. Sarah's really. Hi, Sarah. I think I think our audience is smart yeah. enough and gets Sarah, it. Sarah, you really. They don't know uh, we're in the same we building. Are, <laughs> we are going to have a really nice day today. Some people, of course, love to barbecue on Sunday, and so here's a look at your backyard barbecue forecast, including. You can see that cornhole game right there that people play in the backyard. It's going to be toasty in the afternoon. You know, it's going to be 92 degrees. So by no means will it be cool today. It will be hot today, but the low humidity is going to make all the difference in the world and make it feel okay, especially in the shade. East southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and plenty of sunshine. But right now outside is the key point of the day that you'll want to get out and enjoy some time because we may not have morning lows in the low six like what we're experiencing now until the fall. So get out and enjoy it while you can. It's a beautiful start to the day. It is 57 degrees in beautiful Kerrville, Texas. 56 in Comfort, 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 60 in Bulverde, 59 at Rio Medina, 64 in Castroville, 64 in Stinson, 63 at JBSA Randolph. Wonderful temperatures, 65 in New Braunfels. Now, in the future cast today, I would not be surprised if one or two showers pop up along the coastal plain for areas closer to Corpus Christi. So like Beeville, Victoria, you've got a very small chance for an isolated shower today. In San Antonio, however, we are going to stay dry and we're going to stay sunny too. And because of that, we'll be able to warm up really nicely. Even though we're in the 60s and 50s right now, we'll likely have an afternoon high in the low 90s. One exception being up in the hill country where temperatures may barely stay in the 80s for areas like Kerrville and Rock Springs. 92 for the high in San Antonio and in New Braunfels, 94 out toward Hondo, 96 in Del Rio and 95 in Eagle Pass, but we should avoid the triple digits today, which is nice to say in the middle of June. Pleasant and 80 degrees around 10 noon 86 and sunny 92 but the key is low humidity east southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and nice in the evening now these east southeast winds are going to be the first change to seeing that humidity increase by tonight right now dew points are in the 50s that is very pleasant that's why we've been enjoying these comfortable mornings but watch as we go ahead in time notice that that humidity is really going to return as early as tomorrow morning and then by tuesday we're going to have dew points in the 70s and it'll be sticky and icky outside and we will have heat index values looking ahead though as far as rain goes even though the humidity will be back we're not going to see much of any chances for rain. Now tomorrow, like I showed you on the future cast, there are going to be a few isolated coastal showers today. Tomorrow, there is a very off chance, only 10%, that one or two of those could make it closer to San Antonio and along the I-35 corridor. But that is honestly wishful thinking in my mind because it's going to be dry and we need some rain. Uh, although we don't have drought conditions, June is the rainiest, one of the rainiest months of the year and we just haven't seen much this month. We've only seen about a tenth of an inch of rain. It'll be humid again by tomorrow morning and then in the week ahead, hot and humid, hot and humid, hot and humid. <laughs> Stephanie, Max, we will prepare for hot and humid. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 648, 66 degrees out. And if you run out of things to watch this weekend, a movie about the Vietnam War now available on Netflix. That's next on GMSA. Black GI, is it fair to serve more than the white Americans that sent you here? Nothing is more confused. Spike Lee marks his entry into the pantheon of Vietnam War films with The Five Bloods. Who was that guy? That brother was the best damn soldier that ever lived. The film follows a group of veterans heading back to Vietnam to find a cache of gold they left behind and the remains of their fallen squad leader played by Chadwick Boseman. We've been dying for this country from the bad get. Elements of Lee's presentation act as a history lesson of black soldiers' contributions throughout America's past and the turbulent era of the late 60s and early 70s. I think there's something I've done in the past, but now I'm getting better at doing it. <laughs>
<laughs> as I've gotten more skillful in my fourth decade as a filmmaker. I love Apocalypse Now. The reason why I cast Lawrence Fishburne to be the lead in school days is because of Apocalypse Now. The reason why I cast Albert Hall Jr. in, 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 in Malcolm X because he was on the boat. And I loved him with Fishburne and the rest of the guys. I see ghosts. What happens to all of us, man? Have you seen him too? Yeah. Delroy Lindo's research into playing a veteran with PTSD hit close to home. The first two people I spoke with were two of my cousins who were both Vietnam vets. They both struggled with, the, both negotiated PTSD, one of my cousins in particular has struggled with it and continues to struggle with the effects. Being back here, it is not easy. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. In that movie? Oh, now no, available no, 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 on Netflix. Go for it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you can watch it on Netflix yeah. right now. It looks, looks good. It looks amazing. Yeah. Very powerful. Time now, 6.53, 66 degrees now. And let's take a look at what's coming up next on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, unrest in Atlanta after a fatal shooting involving a police officer breaking overnight. That officer has been fired. Another on administrative duty. We'll have the very latest right here. Plus, coronavirus on the rise. States such as Florida seeing substantial increases in cases. The new hotspots popping up across this country. And finally, looking at your kids' screen time, the risks of too much technology and what you can do to keep the kids entertained at home. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. A graduation party goes from celebration to terror in just a few moments after a group of suspects opened fire towards the guest. This all happened on the city's east side just before 10 last night. According to police, a truck drove up to the home located on the 4600 block of Argonne Drive. Witnesses told investigators several suspects inside the truck began to argue with those at the graduation party. And moments later, the suspects pulled out at least two guns, opened fire and took off. Police say they have one suspect in custody, but are still searching for the others involved. We know that three people have been hit, a 15 year old boy, a 30 year old woman and a 47 year old man. They're all recovering at Bamsey Hospital. Two of them are in stable condition. One is in critical condition. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. An 11 year old boy is in the hospital after he was shot in his family's living room. It happened after 10 last night in the 200 block of Nelson Avenue on the city's west side. People in the home told police they didn't know if it was a drive by shooting or if it was someone who just walked up to that house. The boy was taken to Bansi in serious condition. What a nice start to the day here for us around San Antonio. We are seeing temperatures in the 60s right now around the Alamo City. Even cooler up in the hill country. It's 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 56 in Comfort, 56 in Kerrville, 59 in Bandera, and 65 at the airport. A wider view, 70 in Del Rio, 64 in Catula, 64 in Pleasanton. And no doubt today that it is going to be hot sunny and we'll look at temperatures rising into the low 90s but with low humidity it should feel great outside winds will be from the east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour and that's going to be the first shift in change for us although we'll have low humidity today that's going to be gone by tomorrow we're going to be seeing humidity really work its way back in. In fact, we'll have morning clouds for your Monday to start off the day. An isolated stray shower is possible, uh, especially southeast of I-35, but in the week ahead, it's going to be fairly dry, humid again. High temperatures are going to climb into the mid 90s, but with that heat index, it's going to feel close to 100 degrees, Max and Stephanie. We'll be prepared. Yeah, so it's going to be humid this week. Oof. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but we have so much coming back at 8 a.m. We have a live interview with Congressman Will Hurd. We're going to talk about a lot of things, including the latest on the protests and the latest on the economic fallout from the coronavirus and $18 million being dispersed to San Antonio and El Paso, how that's all going to be broken up. And we're also going to check in with our Alicia Badetta. She's going to tell us about National Rivers Month and how we can celebrate. Yeah, and up next. I've got weather trivia coming up at 8, uh, too. So hope you guys come back yes, at 8. Stick around. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> See you guys. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now.
Right now on GMSA, three people in the hospital this morning after a graduation party ends in gunfire. The latest details from police. And in a few minutes, we're going to be joined by Congressman Will Hurd live to talk about what Congress can do about police reform and the strategy going forward in regards to the economic fallout from the pandemic. And should be a live shot of downtown San Antonio. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey <laughs> in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Flag Day. Happy Sunday. Mm -hmm. Happy Flag Day. It is also the birthday of the Army. That's right. Happy birthday, U.S. Happy Army. Happy birthday. And it is going to be a perfect day to get out there, wave the flag, yes. celebrate. Low humidity. Life. So mm -hmm. we are lucky to have that right now, right, Sarah? Yeah, low humidity and even a breeze. So if you got a flag, fly it because it's going to be a beautiful day outside. I'll give you that look outside with live cam here. It is looking really nice in downtown San Antonio. We are seeing a beautiful start to the day with temperatures pretty comfortable. Now earlier this morning we were in the low to mid 60s. Now we're at 70 degrees from just about an hour of sunshine there. So we're warming up efficiently already and we're going to continue to see the temperatures rise all day long, but it does feel pretty good outside. It's 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 61 in Kerrville, 58 still in Comfort, 68 in Divine, 61 at Rio Medina. It's 72 in New Braunfels, 66 in Floresville and a wider view here, 72 in Del Rio 66 in Rock Springs and 71 out in Gonzales. Really nice start with the low humidity today and we won't have much to complain about except it will be a little toasty in the afternoon. 92 degrees, but the key there is low humidity. Now, unfortunately, we are going to see the humidity return early tomorrow morning, so enjoy the low humidity today. Surprisingly, we have yet to hit 100 degrees at the airport, even though it was really hot last week. The heat index values were only close to 100 to 105, not the thermometer. So we have yet to officially hit 100 degrees at the airport this year. When was the latest year in San Antonio? The last year in San Antonio that we went without triple digits 1976, 1984, 1994 or 2007. Think about it. I'll have the answer for you coming up as well as a look at the return of humidity. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a night of celebration ends in gunfire after San Antonio police tell us three people were shot at a graduation party. Officers tell us it happened in the 4600 block of Argonne Drive. All of this unfolding just before 10 o'clock last night. Witnesses at the party say a man was running in the streets, screaming for help, saying he was being chased. That's when people in a truck drove up to that home, argued with partygoers and well, they pulled out two guns, started shooting. Police say three people at the party were shot. A 15-year-old boy, a 47-year-old man, and a 30-year-old woman. They were all taken to Bamsey. Two stable. One is in critical condition. Police do have a suspect in custody. No charges have been filed yet. The shooting still remains under investigation. Also new this morning, a game of beer pong in a backyard ends abruptly after someone in the group was shot. It happened in the 500 block of Enid Street around 1045 last night. Police say the group heard a pop and then saw their friend fall over. When they turned him around, they found blood and a bullet hole in his back. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. Police say that another person was shot at the same location last weekend and that they're in the process of comparing shell casings from both incidents. And right now, Royce City Police Department asking for your help finding a 16 year old girl who disappeared yesterday morning. Royce Police say 16 year old Kylie White last seen in the 500 block of Love Lane in Royce City around 2 a.m. She's 5'8", blonde hair, hazel eyes, and pink braces. Officers believe that she is in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information that can help authorities, you are asked to call the Royce City Police Department. That number on your screen is 972-204-7002. Saw's crews have a big mess to clean up today after water flooded a neighborhood. Residents in the Stonehaven subdivision off of Ralph Fair Road on the far northwest side say their street began flooding around 11 last night. We have a call in to Saw's right now. We're going to update you on the situation as more information becomes available. Now take a look at the video. This was captured by one of our KSET viewers early this morning around 2 a.m. She says she was contacted. She contacted Saw's repeatedly to report the issue and according to residents there in that area. Two employees were dispatched and told their water will be shut off as they make significant repairs. 
And we are continuing to follow the latest on that rebar shooting from yesterday morning. Eight people shot right in front of the bar. Police say an intoxicated man shot at bystanders after he was refused entry into rebar. Neighbors near rebar say that the bar scene has caused a lot of frustration, including people parking in their yards. They have to hear loud music and even some patrons of the bar defecating on neighbors property. Clearly this shooting adding to the outrage. District 10, 10 Councilman Clayton Perry says they will have more discussions with the community about their concerns, possibly looking into adding more signage in the area, protecting residents and increasing police patrol. At our last check, the gunman has not yet been caught. In streets across the country, we see the outrage and demand for change all in the aftermath of George Floyd's death. These calls for action are being listened to and they're prompting reform. In today's leading essay, we're joined by Congressman Will Hurd. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure to be on with you all. Good morning, Congressman. All right, we're just going to jump right into it. As protests continue around the country, what is your message to demonstrators and to your constituents? Well, my message is simple. You, you know, a, a black man should not be dying in, in police custody. We saw it happen again uh, this Friday in Atlanta. And we should be making sure uh, that police departments across the country are using best practices. Um, this is something that we can incentivize through Congress. That is about $2 billion worth of Department of Justice of grants that go to local police departments. And we should be making sure those are going to people that are following best practices. Um, mental health is an issue. Um, in San Antonio, we're kind of, San Antonio Police Department is kind of a leader when it comes to, to mental health. Uh, but unfortunately, across the country, um, about uh, and most police departments only get about eight hours of training. Uh, in San Antonio, the San Antonio Police Department does 40 hours. Why does this matter? One in every 10 stops that the police does has something to do with a uh, mental health issue. Um, this is something that we, we also wanna make sure that uh, bad cops get fired. Oftentimes, a police chief knows who the bad cops are, and they try to fire them, and through an adjudication process, they get put back on the force. Um, that's something that's absolutely outrageous, and it impacts um, the, the reputation of the entire force um, because of a handful uh, of bad folks. So this is the kind of stuff and, and solutions we're looking for you know, to, to change in Washington, D.C. I'm working with my colleague and friend Henry Cuellar on making sure that the, the support is there financially through the appropriations process to do some of these things um, so that we can make sure um, that um, we have you know, police forces across the, the country that continue to protect and serve us. And, and Congressman Heard, you marched in Houston, and on several occasions you spoke out, like at the SA Food Bank. And so how did the mm -hmm. chance of defund the police resonate with you and your colleagues? Well, defund the police actually is going to make our communities less safe, right? Um, it's, it's a crazy idea, in, in my opinion, but we should be making sure every dollar is go to the police department, go for uh, best practices and improvement and, and being the best that they can be. Um, and so that's what we're, we're working for. Um, I don't think many in, in Washington, D.C. actually believe in getting rid of funds to, to the police department because, again, um, they have a different difficult job. And whether your skin is black or your uniform is blue, you shouldn't be targeted on our streets. And the men and women in the police, um, uh, most times are, are, are protecting and serving, but we need to be focused on those on those ones that are not following best practices. And we need to make sure there's training um, to make sure that they know how to handle a de-escalation and things like that. And turning to the coronavirus and obviously the huge fallout economically, this week mm -hmm. you announced $18 million to be distributed across the cities of San Antonio and El Paso, including Bear County. So what are those funds' primary function? Uh, those funds were housing and urban development grants to help our most vulnerable population, the homeless. It's going uh, to entities that are ensuring that folks that are homeless um, ha have the resources they need in, in order to continue to, to, to be safe. Uh, we're going to everyone's going to have to deal with coronavirus until we have a vaccine. Um, you know, some say it may be within the next 12 months. Maybe it's a little bit sooner. But in the meantime, this is the, the new normal for us. And we have to be continuing to increase testing. Again, San Antonio is leading the way. 
Uh, San Antonio is one of the few cities where anybody uh, can get a diagnostic test for, for COVID-19. And San Antonio has been leading the way because we've been dealing with this longer than most. We were dealing with this back in, in the third week in January when we had those 91 um, U.S. citizens from Wuhan province brought here uh, to Laughlin Air Force Base. Um, so this is going to continue to be an issue. There's probably going to be a, an additional um, stimulus support. Um, those details are still being worked out and those negotiations are ongoing, uh, likely not to be completed until probably after the 4th of July as we have a more chance to see where the economy is going uh, based on all these reopenings. And speaking of that, the CARES Act upgraded unemployment benefits run out at the end of July. Do you see a possible extension? Um, this is one of the areas of debates. Um, will there be an extension? Uh, potentially, but one thing that will not happen is you will not be able to make more money on unemployment than you did at your previous job. Uh, that's something that's impacting the ability of people to get back um, to to uh, to work. And so that's an area uh, that will, will be restricted so that doesn't happen again. Um, we're also going to have to evaluate um, how federal funds go to cities and counties and states to help. We know the impact to city budgets. And the question is going to be if federal dollars are, are, are given to cities and counties and states, um, how can those dollars be used? Uh, one area that I think everybody agrees on is modernization of our digital infrastructure. Um, on that unemployment issue, we gave more money to unemployment, but the Texas Workforce Commission, uh, the state agency, had a difficult time managing the new load um, because they didn't have the digital infrastructure uh, they needed. So what if we use federal funds in order to make sure that we're providing better digital facing services? Now, that's a project that I'm working on, and I think something that we can find bipartisan and bicameral agreement uh, to make sure that we're not just talking about a recovery. Uh, for me, the word recovery means going back to a place you've already been. I want to talk about advancement. I want to be better when we come out of this COVID-19 crisis and, and modernizing our infrastructure is one way to do that. All right. Congressman Will Hurd, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you. And time now, 812, 70 degrees out. Rivers Month and this morning on GMSA we'll be live with the San Antonio River Authority with more on their mission on how they're able to keep the San Antonio River so beautiful. And it's a beautiful Sunday outside 70 degrees nice low humidity. We're going to check in with Sarah after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. The San Antonio River Authority celebrating National Rivers Month. So during the month of June, the River Authority wants to raise awareness on the beauty of our rivers and how we can work together to make sure they stay okay. Our Alicia Barrera is live from Acequia Park with more on the work that happens there in order to clean our very own San Antonio River. Good morning, you guys. Well, I've been really looking forward to this story, so I've invited Miss Kristen Hansen. She's the Watershed and Park Operations Manager for Sarah. What do we hope that people take away from National Rivers Month? What is the big purpose? So the purpose behind National Rivers Month is to give uh, the, the community and the public an opportunity to really learn about the San Antonio River, how to keep it beautiful, um, how to, uh, to really be able to enjoy the river. And the big reason, you guys, that I wanted to share this story is that I usually bike or run along this trail. And after those thunderstorms hit, I, lo I noticed a lot of trash. But then on my way back home, it was clean. And that's mm -hmm. because of the workers. And we see him see them out here this morning. Um, what exactly is it that their responsibilities are to help maintain the river clean? So they have a lot of responsibilities to maintain uh, the nine mile, uh, the, the nine mile project. Uh, what you see here are Paul and Nathan uh, picking up some litter along along the riverside. Uh, they their main focus, of course, is the safety um, of the public. So as soon as we have a rain event, if there's silt and sediment on the trail, they come through and they they clear that. The whole team does, and then they start working on the litter. And so we have that opportunity between our staff and some contractors to pick up all the litter along the river. Kristen, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And we're going to stick around here at Asequia Park to speak more on what people, what we can do when we come explore. Again, you said nine miles, right, is yeah. what people can come explore here. So the different opportunities, hiking, uh, fishing, running, mentioned cycling, lots to do. Back to you.
It looks beautiful out there, Alicia, and what a great Very day beautiful. to clean up the river, right? Yeah, hey, why don't we start off with the river forecast? Okay. Like a river walk and a park forecast? What do you guys think about that? Sounds good. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the river forecast for the day. We are going to be able to see temperatures climbing all the way up to about 92 degrees today, but low humidity will be really nice out there. East southeast winds at five to 10 miles per hour. So if you do go out to the river walk, go out to the park, make sure to find some shade. Okay, before the break, Max and Stephanie, I did ask this question. We have yet to officially hit 100 degrees at the airport and we won't do it this week. Okay, we just won't. When was the last year that we went without hitting triple digits? It's possible. When was last year? Well, because you ask when was the latest year. Yeah, the latest I'm year. I'm going to guess 2007. 2007, okay. I'm going to go 1994. All right. Stephanie's right again. Undefeated. I think this is like four in a row. That's She's 27 and two. <laughs> We're actually keeping score at this point. 27 and two. Yeah, back in 2007, 13 years ago. That's crazy that 2007 was 13 years ago. We missed out on hitting 100 and we won't hit it this week, but we've still got a whole heck of a lot of summer to get through. It's 70 degrees outside right now. Beautiful start to the day. This morning temperatures were in the 50s and 60s around San Antonio and up into the hill country. Now things have warmed up slightly, still in the 60s. 60s out in Kerrville, 63 degrees, 67 in Hondo. It's 72 in New Braunfels, 71 in Gonzales, 71 in Pleasanton, and 72 out toward Del Rio. In the future cast, I can't rule out a coastal shower, but here in San Antonio, we are going to stay dry today, looking at high temperature in the low 90s. Just about everywhere you look, even up in the hill country, it should get up to about 90 degrees near Burning and Leon Springs as well. 93 for the high in Castroville, 92 in Lavernia, 92 at JBSA Randolph, 92 in downtown San Antonio. We'll already be at 80 degrees by 10, 86 by noon, 92 in the afternoon, but the key today is going to be low humidity. I hope you've enjoyed our stretch of low humidity. We've had about four to five days here with low humidity. Unfortunately, tomorrow the humidity will be back. Dew points today will be generally in the 50s and that's pretty nice and pleasant uh, on our scale, but notice how much they rise by tomorrow and Tuesday. We'll be in the muggy category practically all week long, but unfortunately that will not result in widespread rain. The reason for that, we've got this big blocking high pressure system that's going to allow for any rainfall systems across the United States to go up and over the high. So in Texas, we'll generally stay dry and toasty with high temperatures in the 90s. Now, the one exception to this is going to be those showers that may develop along the coastal plain. So this is over the next few days. We'll likely see a few showers develop down near Beeville, Victoria and Corpus Christi. There is an off chance even tomorrow that one or two of those may make it up to that I-10 corridor, uh, I-35 corridor rather. So we're going to give you it about a 10 to 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm tomorrow. But the key here is no widespread rain expected for us over the next seven days. And that's a little unfortunate because June happens to be one of the rainiest months of the year. Although we don't have drought around San Antonio right now, that could change because again, it's going to be dry as a bone over the next seven days, albeit hot and humid. Stephanie, Max. Thank you, Sarah. We will be prepared. Thanks, Sarah. 821, 70 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the reaction from a popular comedian after protesting in California. What Tiffany Haddish had to say about the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm mad. I'm fed up. I'm, and when I get upset, I try to, you know, it hurts. So I try to laugh, laugh, it, like, try to figure out a way to make it funny to, so you can process it, so you can do it. It's, it's really hard. I've, I got PTSD. I've watched many of my friends be killed by the police. And it is, it is devastating. It's scary. And that is comedian Tiffany Haddish. She got a little emotional at a California protest this week. While marching the streets of L.A. with fellow protesters, Haddish shared how she felt about the Black Lives Matter movement. She went on to say, quote, I shouldn't feel like it's dangerous to be born the way that I was born, end quote. Also in your spotlight news, this is a big one. SpongeBob fans somewhat taken by surprise after Nickelodeon tweeted that its beloved character, part of the LGBTQ community, the post included SpongeBob SquarePants reading, celebrating pride with the LGBTQ plus community and their allies this month and every month. 
And time now, 826, 70 degrees out. And the move for police reform continuing across the country. What we know about the autonomous zones like one in Seattle, that's next on GMS. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Sunday. It is so nice with the low humidity. We went for a bike ride yesterday. Mm. It was very nice. It almost felt like, uh, you know, spring or fall for, for a second in the evening. Yesterday mm. was perfect. My girlfriend got roller skates because apparently they're trendy oh, now. Oh, cool. I'm like the well, least they're trendy hard, person. They're hard to get. Yeah, they're on back order. It's very 90s, but either <laughs> way, yesterday, a perfect day. Tried to work on the tan. I listened to you. I listened to Sarah. I got the SPF 50 awesome. out. Awesome. Did it safely. Yeah, if you follow Max on Instagram, you'll notice that yesterday he said the girlfriend wanted to go skating. I wanted to go swimming, so we compromised and went skating, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But yeah, it's beautiful outside right now. Uh, you can see that gorgeous sky there. It's nice and clear out there and not too hot either. It is 70 degrees at the airport. Meanwhile, it's, it's still in the 60s up in the hill country, 66 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 63 in Kerrville, 61 in Comfort, 65 in Bandera, and 67 in Tarpley. A really beautiful start to the day, just about everywhere you look around the of KSAT 12 viewing area, all thanks to that low humidity. Now, unfortunately, by the start of this week, it's going to be humid once again, but we do have one more day of low humidity. So if you plan on going uh, to a backyard barbecue forecast or maybe just uh, barbecuing yourself outside, know that it's going to get toasty in the afternoon. 92 for the high, but that low humidity will keep things in check. East southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We've got to turn and talk about that return of humidity here. Here soon, so I'll have a look at that as well as rain chances in the upcoming week coming up shortly. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man is in the hospital in serious condition after he was shot at the Monte Carlo Club off of Northwest Loop 410. Police say two men and a woman were trying to get into that club but were denied entry because they were heavily intoxicated. That's when officers say the group got in their vehicle, drove around the front and fired several shots toward the front door hitting a man standing outside. After they tried to get away, they hit a curb and blew out the back tire. The driver kept going and drove down Vance Jackson on the rim of the tire until police caught up to them at the shopping center on Wurzbach. The gunman threw the gun in a bush. Now all three were arrested. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. And this is new this morning, a woman in police custody facing charges of endangering a child, a risk of bodily injury after her infant died in the care of her mother. Police say 38 year old Crystal Acosta arrested last night just before 930. Investigators say Acosta shined, showed signs of impairment, drugs found inside the home. This is an ongoing and a fluid story. Make sure to stay with KSAT on air and online for the latest updates. And in your latest news, a different kind of protest happening at the Alamo this weekend. Dozens rallying against a plan to relocate the Alamo Cenotaph. The Alamo Master Plan, proposed by the state, calls for the Cenotaph to be moved 500 feet south of where it is now. Those who oppose the plan say it interferes with the Alamo's history. One protester says there is no need to relocate it at all. Well, the Cenotaph was built in 1939 as a memorial to those who fought during the Battle of the Alamo. Let's look at the latest numbers of confirmed COVID-19 cases in our area. There are 230 new positive COVID-19 cases. It's highest report for a single day ever here in Bear County, bringing the total to 400,242. Metro Health also confirming four new deaths in our community with a total of 88 people dead related to the pandemic. Breaking it down even further, there are 148 positive patients in the hospital with 58 in the ICU and 26 on ventilators. Local health officials say our area's daily positivity rate has doubled from just one week ago. Amongst those testing positive for the virus were three VIA employees. The company made the announcement on their website and they say the people who tested positive are now recovering at home. With the new cases in total, there are eight VIA operators, three administrative employees and three maintenance staff members all testing positive for COVID-19. Again, all of this information according to VIA. 
Over in Santa Marcos, almost 20 businesses have closed their doors temporarily to allow for proper cleaning and sanitation of facilities between identified lab confirmed positive cases of COVID-19. The city of San Marcos' emergency management coordinator says the patient who tests positive chooses to inform their employer and the owner may then decide to close the business. For the full list of those businesses that are temporarily closed, you can visit our website at ksat.com. And back here at home, a group of protesters marched downtown this weekend to end racial inequality, especially those in the LGBTQ community. Now, their efforts come after the Trump administration announced plans to roll back health care protections for the transgender community. Protesters at the Bayer County Courthouse say stripping away health care protections for transgender men and women opened the door for further discrimination. And across the country this morning, the move for police reform is intensifying. ABC's Zachary Keish has more. No justice! No Overnight protesters took the streets in a march against police brutality. In the nation's capital, demonstrators blocked a highway. This is protesters in several cities are taking over certain areas, claiming them as autonomous zones, free of police control. In Nashville, Tennessee, demonstrators seizing the steps of the state capitol. We're all together and fighting for the same thing, the eradication of racism in the United States. The group camping out, the governor threatening action. In Asheville, North Carolina, protesters attempted to block a freeway before officers moved in, tearing down barriers. And in Seattle, for days, demonstrators have surrounded this precinct. This building is the people's. You know, we pay for it with our taxes. The department surrendering the building after weeks of clashes. But as calls for police reform grow nationwide, another video made public appearing to show more excessive use of force. Hey, that's a soft second, oh. police officer. In Connecticut, New Haven police are seeing a violently throwing a handcuffed suspect to the ground earlier this year, kicking him and pulling his hair. Robert 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 in California, demonstrators demanding answers after a black man was found hanging in a tree in the city of Palmdale. The sheriff's department initially saying there was no foul play in Robert Fuller's death. But overnight, local officials requesting the state attorney general oversee an investigation into his death. Now, governors in states like New York and Colorado are attempting to make change. If you really want to be the progressive capital, you have to lead with action. Governor Andrew Cuomo giving a nine-month deadline for government across the state of New York to come up with reforms or see their funds cut. Colorado is one of those states getting a lot of attention for their reforms. One of a number of changes that we'll see there is a ban on chokeholds. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Monday is the deadline if you plan to vote in the next month's runoff election. Election day is July 14th, but early voting begins on June 29th. There are several ways you can go about registering. You can fill out a voter registration application online, print it, and mail it to the voter registrar in your county. For more information, you can head to our website at ksat.com and search Vote 2020. The need for blood is still very high. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says they have a three-day supply in their inventory. But when it comes to supplies of O positive, there is less than half a day supply. If you want to schedule an appointment to donate, all you have to do is call that number on your screen, 210-731-5590. The Blood Center also offering donors who give blood or give platelets a chance this month to win a prepaid two-year lease on a new Ford Mustang. Look at that. Nice. You do a good thing and you get a car. It's all in partnership between Jordan Ford and the center. The center also testing for COVID-19 antibodies. And in celebration of it being National Rivers Month, the San Antonio River Authority wants to show off the beauty of our very own river to encourage families to bike, run, kayak, and even fish. Alicia Rivera, join us live from the park with more on the opportunities to explore along the San Antonio River. Morning, Alicia. Good morning. I want to take, have you all take a look at just how beautiful, just appreciate the beauty of the San Antonio River here by Ezequiel Park, but it takes a lot of work. Earlier we saw Nathan and Paul, they're part of the weekend crew here, cleaning up and just look how much trash they were able to pick up in just a few minutes. With me is Kristen Hansen, Watershed and Park Operations Manager. And talk to me about some of the stuff that's just so common for these workers to find. 
Yeah, so you can see here in the back of the mule uh, what the Paul and Nathan picked up, like you said, in just a few minutes. This is pretty common to find, um, you know, milk jugs and bottles and cans and plastic bags and styrofoam containers. They do sometimes find, you know, mattresses and coolers, trash cans. There was a trampoline that was blown in from, uh, from someone's yard, you know, during the storms, this last rain event. Uh, but, you know, the guys, these two and, and everybody else on the Mission Reach team work very hard to, uh, to pick up this litter and keep the river as clean as possible for the community. And for the community you mentioned, so what are some of the activities that people can actually take part? It's uh, nine miles, mm -hmm. uh, one way. So what are some of the different activities that people can get involved in? Right, like you said, it's about a, it's nine miles, one way. Uh, we have trails on both sides of the river for almost the entire nine miles. Uh, and a lot of people come here to, to do a lot of recreational uh, activities. Uh, they run, they hike, they, they walk, they push strollers, they bike, uh, they rollerblade, and then also they, they kayak and canoe. They come out here uh, on a continual basis and take opportunities to, uh, to recreate. And one thing to remember is that this is the community's river. It's, it's all for the community, and uh, we hope that people come out and enjoy it. Wonderful. Kristen, thank you so much for being with us. Nathan Paul, thank you mo so much for your work. And this is just part of what goes into keeping the San Antonio River so beautiful, especially as we celebrate National Rivers Month. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News, back to you. Thank you so much, Alicia. It's such a nice day to walk. You saw the people right behind her already going for a walk, so very nice. Thank you, Lisa. 841, 70 degrees out. And coming up after the break, getting to know a San Antonio graduate whose voice landed him a spot at one of the top music education programs in the country. We're going to introduce you to Tristino Ali. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. That's not it. That's not it. Alicia <laughs> gave us that. There you it. go. There you go. As you saw, it is a beautiful day to run, kayak, fish. We're going to check in with Sarah for your full forecast. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Throughout these unprecedented times, we've been highlighting seniors in and around our area. And today's great graduate, while well, his singing voice landed him a top spot at one of the top music education institutions across the entire country. So for today's great graduate series, our Sarah Costa introduces us to Tristino Ali from Clemens High School. Lift every voice, glorious I was really shy, like really shy, like somebody walked past me, I mm -mm, wasn't going to happen. Senior Tristino Ali says it was his choir class that helped him break him out of his shell. After achieving several awards through Honors Choir over four years at Clemens High School, he says making All-State Choir this year was the most rewarding. Definitely making the All-State Choir, that was the biggest thing ever for me. I mean, that made this year this year, wow. It's what he says inspired him to continue his education in music. This fall, Tristino plans on attending the University of North Texas to study musical education. He says he's extremely proud to get into the program, saying it's one of the top 15 programs in the country. Lift every voice. But it wasn't just music that helped him land that spot, but also his grades. Tristino is graduating top 10% of his class from the IB program. The IB program, man. It's hard. One at Tristino's school counselor says his accomplishments are impressive and she's extremely proud of his hard work. He's one of a very small handful of students that have been extremely successful in our international baccalaureate program, also known as IB. And he's just a phenomenal young man. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful voice, and Tristino says he wants to use his music degree to one day be a high school choir teacher. Congratulations. Oh. That was so nice you let him finish before you talked. Well, great. yeah. <laughs> you know, he has a great voice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So impressive. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Tristino, and all of the class of 2020. All right, Sarah, you over there? Yeah, I'm over here. I was actually <laughs> updating the go. pollen count. Uh, so if you do have our KSAT Weather Authority app, you should get a notification from me within the next few seconds because I just sent out this pollen count uh, to everyone.
our uh, weather authority app. You can see mold is low at 400. Grass and pigweed are low as well, and that is all good news there. Uh, so really a lot shouldn't stop you from going out and enjoying today's beautiful weather, apart from having to socially distance, of course. Right now outside, it is nice and comfortable. It's 70 degrees at the airport at the moment, and it's still in the 60s in many places around San Antonio. 68 at JBSA Randolph, 64 Four up in the Hill Country in Kerrville, 66 in Bandera, 63 in Comfort, 71 in Canyon Lake, and 72 in New Braunfels. We started off in San Antonio right at around 65 degrees. Another beautiful start, all because of low humidity. Now, in spite of that, there still may be one or two isolated showers or storms along the coastal plain today, closer to Corpus Christi, Beeville, and Victoria, but we'll stay dry here in San Antonio. Tomorrow, however, one or two of these could actually make it to the I-35 corridor in the afternoon, but don't get your hopes up for widespread rain. That is just not in the cards, not only today, but across the week ahead. In the future cast for today, though, sunshine into the afternoon, 92 degrees for the afternoon high here in San Antonio. will likely be closer to 90 up in the hill country toward Kerrville, and then in the upper 90s out toward Del Rio. But we should avoid the triple digits everywhere around San Antonio, which is good news in my book in June. More good news, it should be pleasant around 10, 80 degrees. Sunny throughout the day, 86 around noon. East southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, while we'll have low humidity today, those east southeast winds are going to gradually increase the humidity through tomorrow. I want to show you the humidity tracker. Right now, dew points are in the 50s or near 60 degrees. That's really pleasant for this time of year. But why Watch as we go through the future cast here for the humidity. That rich green color returning to San Antonio and South Central Texas. That is very humid air going to be back by tomorrow morning and pretty much lasting throughout the entire week ahead. We'll start a pattern of morning clouds and afternoon sun all because of that low level humidity. But again, like I said, rain chances over the next seven days. Not looking that great. We'll have an isolated shower or storm tomorrow. Like I said, around the coast, those could make it to the I-35 corridor, but it's going to be fairly dry over the next seven days. June is usually typically rainy, and we have only seen less than a tenth of an inch of rain this month so far. So we are well below average at the moment. Morning clouds tomorrow throughout the week ahead. By the middle of the week, those afternoon highs, although they'll only be a couple of degrees warmer than what we'll experience today, humidity will make it feel closer to 100. Max, Stephanie? Ouch, back to hot and humid. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. 850, 70 degrees out. And hard work and determination has paid off for this graduating senior. Tomorrow on GMSA at 6, we will introduce you to the valedictorian from Poth High School. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, three, seven, fireball, four, daily four, eight, nine, four, five, fireball, nine. Cash five, one, nine, ten, twenty three, thirty two. Lotto Texas, six, twelve, eighteen, thirty nine, forty eight, forty nine. And your powerball numbers, two, twelve, thirty two, fifty, sixty five, powerball five, power play three. Good luck. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police tell us three people shot at a graduation party overnight. It happened in the 4600 block of Argonne Street just before 10 o'clock. Police telling us a man running in the street was screaming for help, saying he was being chased. That's when people in a truck drove up to that home hosting the party, shot at the party goers. All three taken to BAMC, two stable, one is in critical condition. Police right now have at least one suspect in custody. No charges have yet been filed. Here's the power of the South Texas sun. We're already up eight degrees from when I checked in with you just a few minutes ago. It's 78 degrees in San Antonio International Airport, still in the 60s up in the hill country. That low humidity will allow our temperatures to warm up even more today, 72 in Del Rio. Now, if you do want to get some yard work done today, just know that it's going to be hot in the afternoon. We're going to be seeing temperatures climb into the 90s, 92 for the high temperature today. Uh, but again, that low humidity is going to help things out quite a bit for us. East southeast winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. A quick check of the pollen count before you go. Looking good. Mold is low at 400. Grass and pigweed are low as well. And then in the seven day forecast, slowly starting to see the humidity return by tomorrow morning. We'll have clouds and a chance for 
an isolated shower or storm generally southeast of I-35 tomorrow in the afternoon. Other than that, it's going to be fairly dry over the next several days. So Max and Stephanie, hope that you guys can enjoy some time outside today because the low humidity, we got to soak it up while we can. Good advice. I will take advantage of that. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Steph. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Sunday.